Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to Good Shepherd Parish. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our Mass intention is for the people of Good Shepherd Parish. Our celebrant today is Father George, assisted by Deacon Jeff. All of the music and readings for today's Mass can be found in the Breaking Bread Missiles in front of you, as well as in the bulletin located at the entrances of the church. Let us stand and turn to greet our neighbor. And let us join in singing our gathering song, number 599, Christ Be Our Light, number 599. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. We continue to celebrate Easter and Christ's victory over sin and death. And as we do that today, as we gather in faith, we also acknowledge as we begin this celebration of the Eucharist, our need, our continual need for God's mercy and forgiveness for our brokenness and our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you are our spotless lamb. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to, when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm can be found on page 7 of the bulletin. face on 
from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, but not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we make sh be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what they had, what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do, you question, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You, are witnesses of these things. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name, in Jesus' name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations. This prediction or this mandate of Jesus, of the risen Christ, is echoed in our first reading today when Peter says, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. In John's epistle, too, in the second reading, we're urged to stop sinning. And if we have sinned, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross can take away our sins. We proclaim that every week. Now, people who live without much thought to the will of God may silence their conscience by saying, you know what, I'll do that whole repentance thing a little later on. But it's possible, or is it possible, that we can change our heart, our habits, our way of thinking in a day, or simply by an act of our will? Okay, on April 14th, 2024, I will repent. Highly unlikely. Some may be inclined to wonder, well, what's all this talk just after Easter about sinfulness? Yes, we all know we're sinners. No one's perfect. And if forgiveness is easy, if we turn to God, we're forgiven. We believe that. We preach that. And so it is. But St. John in his second reading also had a warning for us. He says, you can be sure that we know God only by keeping God's commandments. And knowing God here, when John is talking about knowing God, it's not knowing someone uh, in a moral, or it has a moral dimension. It's not just knowing someone. I know you, I know you, I know who you are. Knowing someone, knowing what they're about, knowing what's important to them. So it has nothing to do with an intellectual understanding. To know God means to have a close and a personal relationship with God. So to know Jesus Christ would entail a life of prayer, a life being steeped in the scriptures, a recognizing Christ in the community to which we belong. So being a disciple of Christ has incredible privileges, but it also makes certain demands on each one of us. For we cannot be like Christ. We cannot be like him unless we become or aim to have the same purity of heart. And by purity of heart, I mean focus on God, God's will, God's kingdom. There's a story of a man, a poor man, a simple guy actually, who regularly went to this church and he would come in and he'd kneel before the crucifix. And someone said, they always saw him there and said, why don't you... Why are your lips ever moving? What do you say when you're there? And he responded, well, I just look at him and he looks at me and it's peaceful, it's comfortable. Words had given way to simple contemplation. So we become like Christ by seeing him as he really is, by spending time with him in prayer, in community, in the scriptures, at the Eucharist. In Jesus' words in the gospel today, you will be messengers of the forgiveness. He appeared to the disciples in the upper room, Peter who had denied him, who had abandoned him, denied him three times, and like the rest of the disciples, left him alone, fell asleep on him in the Garden of Gethsemane, abandoned him at the cross, and he appeared to them in that room, the first privileged uh, ex uh, experience of the risen Christ. And the first thing he said to them was, 
peace be with you. Not hanging on to any resentments about any of that. Wanting them to know they were forgiven, they were loved. We've all done something that we regret. We've said something, we've done something, or we haven't done something that we regret. And it can leave us burdened. It can disappear for a while and come back. I said something to my father when I was 22 years old that I only apologized to him 10 years later for. And I said, Dad, you know, when I said that, I didn't mean it. And my father had been drinking that night. He didn't even remember. And he was heartbroken. He said, oh, I wish you had said something. He said, I don't even remember it. So we all carry stuff. And to be forgiven is an incredible gift. Those disciples, those first disciples in that upper room must have felt that burden. Gathered together there in fear, knowing what they had done, knowing they had abandoned their friend, their Lord, their Savior. And he said nothing to them other than again, peace be with you. The first experience of the risen Lord was forgiveness. Christ's great gift to them. And forgiveness sometimes can be difficult to receive. We wonder, do they really forgive me? Are they just saying that to make me feel good? But it can be difficult to receive. It can be difficult to admit that we're sinners to begin with, that we need anything for forgiveness. I always tell a story about my mother one time. I said we had a little tiff about something. And I said, well, now, if, we were going out to dinner, I think. I said, now, if you're ready to apologize, I said, I'm, I'm ready to receive the apology. I will not, she said. And I said, well, why not? And she said, well, I'm your mother. She said, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. She said, I don't do anything wrong. And I said, and therein, mother, lies the problem. We all do something wrong on occasion. We all need to apologize. We all need to forgive. And it's difficult, as I said, to admit that. It's difficult to receive the forgiveness sometimes. And the disciples tonight in the gospel, they were frightened when they saw Jesus. They were so taken aback, who is this? And he said, see my hands, see my feet, my wounds. Let me eat a piece of fish. It's me. I forgive you. And he hoped that they received that message. And his mandate was to them to go, knowing themselves as loved sinners. Go and preach that repentance to everyone, to all nations. Not to the people we like, not to, to everyone. Go and preach the repentance of sins. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. You know what? I'm always a big fan. Sometimes the biggest, uh, when I was a teacher, <laughs> the biggest screw-ups in the class, they really were my favorites. Someone who sinned, who knows themselves to be broken, who knows themselves in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, that's someone you can trust. Someone who knows what it is to be forgiven. And when they tell that story, when someone in a 12-step program tells that story of surrender to a higher power, knowing they can't, there's no way out except surrender to that higher power. So all of us today are asked to repent from our sinfulness, be it little, be it medium, be it great. Whatever it is, s s repent, be converted, and give away what you've been given. Tell people about the forgiveness of God, what a difference that makes in your life. I say it a lot these days, the world is incredibly polarized. The church, politically, our country is divided, families are divided, some don't speak to each other. We need to learn how to listen to one another, how to forgive one another. 
And we do that best when we know our own brokenness, our own vulnerabilities, turn to God, ask for forgiveness, and having received that, to give it away to others. Let's pray for that grace, my friends, today for ourselves, but not just for ourselves, for our church. Salvation is never a singular thing. It's in community that we're saved. So remember, we're the people of God. Pray for ourselves and pray for our church that we might be able to listen to God's mandate, Jesus' mandate in the gospel, and preach the forgiveness of sins. So we pronounce our faith in the Nicene Creed today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. All things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. and rose again the day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. So as we continue to rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, let us bring our needs and those of the world to God in our prayer. For the church, that the glorified wounds of Jesus and his sharing a meal with the disciples may enhance our faith to follow in the way of love taught and modeled by Jesus. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the power of the risen Lord enthuse us in all we say and do this week, wherever we are. We pray. For an increased awareness among our people of the closeness of the Lord in their vocation discernment, we pray. For the peoples of the world, that the resurrection of our Lord may be for them a sign of hope, not of conflict, and that peace and justice may prevail everywhere, we pray. For all who are suffering, those undergoing treatments, or living recovery, that God's healing love will strengthen them, remove their pain, and restore them to wholeness, we pray. For all who have died, May they rejoice in the mercy of God and the triumph of Easter, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Part of the prayer of absolution in confession, what the priest says at the end is, to the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace. So may each one of us in our brokenness turn to the Lord and experience that peace, that forgiveness that the Lord wants to share with all of us so that we in turn can share it with others. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving God, hear the prayer as we celebrate with joy the resurrection of your Son and grant to all humanity a renewed faith in your promise to us of resurrection to new life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are prepared, let us join in singing number 405, Open My Eyes, number 405.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising, the life of all, has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created has rightly given you praise. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Sean Patrick, our Bishop, all the clergy and the entire people, you have made your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And today we remember in a special way Cheryl Kane and Richard Kane Jr. and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer the, each other the sign of peace. I forgot a line there. Peace be peace. with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. First, thank you very much for coming out this afternoon on a beautiful uh, Saturday afternoon. Thank you so much, and thank you, Father George, for presiding uh, for us today. It's a blessing to have you with us. 
This year, the Knights of Columbus uh, will be sponsoring their uh, annual Knights at the Races fundraiser on Saturday, May 4th at St. Han Hall. The doors open at 5.30 and the races, I put that in quotes, starts at 6.30. Admission tickets will be available at the end of Mass and every Mass at $15 per person and $20 at the door. The admission includes cold sandwich and dessert buffet. Dessert part's my favorite. Also a uh, cash bar for beverages, beer, and wine. So come to the event with your family, adult friends for a fun evening of exciting excitement and socializing. The evening's entertainment includes wagering on horse races in which the audience participates as jockeys, a derby hat contest, as well as raffle items, a great silent auction, and a special drawing for a chance to win an e-bike. The money raised from this event will go towards parish youth activities, seminarian support, altar server awards, and many other local charities, all sponsored by the Knights of Columbus and, and uh, supported by our Knights of Columbus Council of Good Shepherd Parish. So that's Saturday, May 4th um, at 5.30 p.m. at St. Anne Hall. And thank you once again for being with us this afternoon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And as we go forth, let us join in singing number 525, Christ in Me Arise, number 525. the king. 